bulletin and in email announcements, you've seen something about Adopted Seminarian Program. This is run by Outreach Alaska. Now the woman who runs Outreach Alaska is uh, Mary Ann Corey. She's Antiochian, an Antiochian church in Kansas. So she takes care of what's going on in Alaska from Kansas. Uh, St. Nicholas Cathedral, what's that? What's St. Nicholas? Our Cathedral, right? I have some children here. Our Cathedral uh, sponsored has sponsored four different seminarians at St. Herman's Seminary in Kodiak, Alaska. We started in 2002, and Father Simeon, the one that I visited this time, is the fourth, uh, fourth seminarian, just graduated, and he's the third priest out of four. That's pretty good. This is our seminarian, uh, Father Simeon, John Simeon. He started out as John. He was ordained uh, deacon in March, so he was deacon when I say deacon um, John, <laughs> and then he was ordained a priest, and uh, he's a uh, father Simeon, and that is, can you tell, that's me, yeah. Okay, I'm talking to the children up here. We have a nice little group of children who um, are dressed. Can you stand up? Stand up, turn around. I don't have much time, stand up. <laughs> they have t-shirts which were made uh, put together by um, Sharon Osmolovsky, who is very excited about Alaska. And so she made shirts like this. She didn't think that she could make one quite like mine. This is, this is a Gus book. It's Yupik, and you'll see later on about that. Okay. Um, I wanted to clarify that, this is the commercial part. I wanted to clarify that the money for the three adopted seminarians, the first three seminarians, had come from the uh, St. Nicholas Treasury. It was a line item, and we were able to give money out of the church to take care of tuition, just tuition. That was $200 a month, 12 months a year, three years. So figure, that was coming from the church. What you used to give to at Christmas time, um, or whenever I would ask, you were very good to give money toward, toward the family, and that was uh, for gifts, of, for, things, for things for them to buy for themselves like diapers and things like that. Okay, um, but th this time, it came time to have our seminarian who started three years ago, four years ago. And uh, the church, we really didn't have the money to do something special like this. So it just happened that uh, a man had passed away who had a memorial fund. It just happened that the man was my father. And Michael Shando was well uh, received here. He was a subdeacon, he was a Sunday school, he was a supervisor, so on and so forth. And the money was coming into his memory and we thought it would be for education. So the parish council president said it would be really helpful, the treasurer, I guess, treasurer, money, you know, uh, that it would be helpful uh, if that Memorial Fund could take over taking care of the tuition for the seminary. I said, oh, great, that's, that's perfect, absolutely perfect. Uh, nine years ago, in 2005, when the first seminary had graduated, uh, my father and I went to, to Kodiak, like I did this time, to see the graduation. And it was a wonderful, wonderful trip. Uh, my father was 86 years old, but he was going along. We went to the... Um, uh, Spruce Island and uh, up on top of the mountain, and you look down and you see all of all of uh, Kodiak. This time when I went, it was a little quieter, uh, so there wasn't quite so much. Okay, now let's see here. Okay, so so anyway, this year coming up is a school year, and Mrs. Corey said to me, "I don't think we have a second year seminarian for you to sponsor." I said, well, that's pretty good, because we need a year to see if we can swing this to raise the money to, to keep up this program. So we'll see about that. The stipulation for the sponsors at graduation is that the, the graduation gift is a gift of vestments, specifically green, and I, you know, why green at the time, and then an, an icon of the church that sponsors. 
Well, one week after the graduation, they welcomed a new baby in the family. And a week after that, they were sent to a village on the Aleutian Islands in time for Pentecost. Do you know what color we wear on Pentecost? Green. And so, wasn't that perfect? Who do you think took care of that? Okay, um, it, it didn't come at the same time, but I added that people were so generous that we had enough money to also get a white stikhar that's worn underneath the vestments. And uh, you, you, you can't really see, but it's very, very pleased. Ubix don't, don't jump up and down like I do, they, but he was very, very pleased. And when I went to his home for dinner that night, after the, uh, or, no, I guess the next day I was up there, he, uh, he came out of the room and he said, I tried it on. <laughs> because it was the newest, it was the first new vestments he had had. For some reason, when he was the deacon, when he became, when he was ordained a priest, they wanted it during, uh, they, they said that that's the family that takes care of that. Well, he borrowed, he has many priests in his family, so this was his first, his own thing. So then there's another, there's a, and, and this is my pose as, uh, what's her name on the, on the Vanna TV show? Vanna, Vanna, Vanna White, White. yeah. <laughs> This is, this is a St. Nicholas icon, which we presented to him. It's sort of a large size one for him to remember his sponsoring church, which I'm sure he will never forget. He said how, how, how generous all the people had been because he knows that the extra money that is sent to him and his family comes from people like you who want to help uh, Alaska uh, bring forth priests uh, to, to grow their churches. But at the end of the graduation, each graduate spoke. They were see a picture of, there were two priests and one leader who had graduated. Well, they put Father Simeon at the end, because he's kind of uh, affable and you know, jokey and so on, but also I think because at the end of his speech, he said, and now I would like to give some gifts to my sponsor. And I was representing you, so I accepted the gift. Um, well, there's, there's other. Well, anyway, this you can see what this is, and I was very pleased with it because this is what I saw them wearing at church. The women wear these. Um, it's it's long enough to be with the pants after they're out, you know, fishing or gathering berries or whatever they have to do. They can then go. To Vespers, right? So I was so pleased when he handed me this this gift and said that one of the ladies had made it, had, had made it for me for this occasion. So I have it on today, and what can I put in there? My tuning fork. I can put a pen, Kleenex. This is very useful outfit, so they so. The, Mothers can keep things in there, maybe Kleenex for the baby or something like that. Um, they have, there's a hood, and the hood is because there are flies there, and you need to, to, to cover your head. And then look at the sleeve. I have a very long, very long sleeve. And I'm thinking, well, maybe the sleeve is long to put into your gloves, or if a mother comes and says, oh, I have to wipe, wipe his face. <laughs> this is a very useful product uh, kind of thing. And I just thought, oh, I wish I had one. So now I have one. OK, so then you see um, this is an icon he gave to us of St. Nicholas. So he had the same idea that, that you know, St. Nicholas should come. Wanna, I would present it to Father Valeri. Maybe you want to open it. And um, so that's the, the St. Nicholas. And to me, he gave uh, an icon. You can't quite see it, but I think it's very familiar. St. Herman is in the middle. And all around are pictures about St. Herman's life. And this icon has a helicopter in it. If you look very carefully, the helicopter came um, 
which came to, to Spruce Island, I guess, or something. Anyway, that's part of the picture. And then this one is very nice. This one is a very nice little size, and it is a synopsis of the saints of America. Well, how many, how many saints are on here? Can, can you count them? Six? Okay, there are six saints here. Well, we know that there are more than six saints in North America, but this must have been one of the first icons. Okay, so you have... You have uh, the Saint Tikkun, Saint Innocent, Saint Herman. I can't see her. Uh, but now, if you have, if you look at a, um, at our newest icon of the North American saints, has maybe I don't know, 14, 15 saints in it. So this is an icon that will be changing over time. You want to take a look at it? Pass behind you. Okay. Um, also, also, he gave me, this is called an Ulu knife, U-L-U. This is something that, uh, this is what you give as a gift to people who come to Alaska. The Ulu knife is very short, and uh, the, I can see that the blade is made by my, by my father, Simeon, and the handle, Matushka said the handle is made by her, father, so father said it's father-in-law. It's very, very sharp, and I couldn't take it home with me because I was, I did not have checked baggage. I had baggage that you go straight through. So Mrs. Curry said, well, let me, let me keep it for you until um, I have to, I have to send you some things anyway. And what she needed to send was, and I will present this to her. This is a certificate that the church receives for our work with this seminary, for participation in the Adama Seminary Project as a sponsor for Father John Simeon Askok, signed by Right Reverend David Mahaffey. That is he. That's the new Bishop of Alaska. He's very, I think he's going to be very good. And, uh, um, Marianne Corey, the lady that, that works, that is she. And uh, uh, Father John Dunlop is the dean. Very quiet fellow. Quiet fellow. And this is, he looks bigger in this picture. This is, um, Father Tribunale is um, the teacher of liturgics and canon law. Uh, he's been at St. Herman for a long time. He is looking into becoming a missionary. And he would like to be a missionary in Brazil. Okay, J just real quick. This is, this is the new baby. This is the new baby, um, Stefan. And this is his not even three-year-old huge brother, Tico. He has the name Tico, which I think is the name. And, uh, so I was very pleased to get that on the... See, I, I still will be connecting with Father Simeon. So I got this picture, or maybe I got it off their Facebook. And this, this is Stefan doing what? What's he doing? Blowing a kiss. Blowing a kiss, right? To say thank you. Okay. See, Alaska is here. Big place. The Aleutian chain is down here. You see why it's called a chain? See, it's kind of linked together. <laughs> but if you want to get from one island to the other, can you drive a car? No. No. What would you do to get to the next island? Take a boat or you would fly. So Father Simeon is going to live in one of these, or he's living there now, in one of these islands, and it's called um, Pilot Point. Now, Pilot Point, according to the Wikipedia, in the 2010 census, now this is in 2010, but just listen. The population in 2010 was 68. 68 people lived there. Okay. 86% Native American. That is the people who you know, will be going to church with him uh, and the father, father will be teaching. Okay, they get the mail 
three times a week. I was waiting, waiting that their check, that the check would uh, reach them because the people had, had uh, collected enough money that we were able to buy the vestments and to give a thousand, something like a thousand thirty dollars. So I kept emailing them and I said, did you, did you, you know, go uh, right to the semi seminary and ask if they sent it, sent it over? So finally, he sent an email and he said, we received the check. I knew if I were patient that God would have it sent. So I wrote back and I said, well, I have a card for you from 4th of July. Maybe I better send it in June. <laughs> Three times a week for your mail, okay? All right, so uh, Pilot Point uh, has, um, it's depend it has depended for its existence on the substantial seasonal returns of Anadromous Pacific salmon. Do you know what salmon is? Oh, yeah. Fish, uh, especially sockeye which is the mainstay economic force of the entire region. Over half of the residents depend directly on the salmon fishery for their livelihood. So you work, you work in the fishery factory. With a small remainder depending on tourism, which I didn't know anybody could go there, I guess I'll have to look that up. Um, uh, on tourism and uh, uh, sports, fishing, and hunting, I can see that. Where do you think they would hunt? In the woods? Bears, right? That's right. Um, see, I didn't see any bears because I was in Kodiak water on the uh, making a fire. Anyway, so they have a popular activities in this body. area include sport fishing, hunting, flight seeing. Flight seeing is where you go on a plane and fly around. Wildlife viewing, bears, um, hiking, backpacking, boating, and camping. So, it, so you can see that people do go there. And bird watching. How many t how many species do you think they have? Different kind of birds. Two hundred. 200 different kind of birds. So people who are birders, they call them birders, they would look up this place and go there. All right, then there's Chignik Lake. And in 2010, their population was 73. So that's even less than part of the point. And these are the churches to which Father Simeon will be going. It's 86, almost 87% Native American. And then that's Chignik Lake. And then there's Chignik Bay. Uh, and it, I don't know which one has an airport, I'm kind of got it confused. Um, there were 91 people. So you can see, that's basically fewer than 100 people living. It's 61% Native American. Uh, and also, born there was a man named Benny Benson. He was the famous designer of the Alaskan flag. This, yeah. Yeah. this is the, the a picture of the family before the baby was born. And I don't know how long ago, but you see that Tikhan, the big boy, uh, is just maybe is much younger, uh, but that's a picture that I had, and so you see how they look. This is Matushka. Her name is Darlene, and she's Matushka Tatiana, and Father Simeon forgot to take his sunglasses off. And here they are outside the uh, the cathedral at the seminary, the church. It's not a very big church, but it is the cathedral. And um, when my father and there, I told you, my father and I went in 2005, and at that time, they were putting the new icons up on the Kursas. Well, uh, during the weekend, we're having graduation, and they wanted to have it finished by the time the Metropolitan was there to uh, celebrate for the graduation. And so during the time, my father would take pictures of two icons are up, now three icons are up, and they actually got it done, so that's what we would call that. And they look beautiful. This is nine years later. Looks beautiful. When I was there for um, the graduation, uh, Father Simeon and the two girls met me at the airport. And the first thing that hit me was the mountains. To see those mountains right like, like in your backyard. I mean, here we have hills, something we call a mountain, but I, when I can go somewhere and actually see a mountain, I think it's very amazing. Um, uh, uh, in the church, we had a service in Akathist for St. Herman, and then we had a Vespers on uh, a Saturday night, and then the liturgy on Sunday. So I got to see Father Simeon um, uh, serving, which was kind of exciting to see him around. And the children were back here, and he can <laughs> to be. <laughs> um, 
Um, Bishop David was there, it was Mother's Day, I was absent here, it was Mother's Day, so we had Mother's Day lunch, and the men put it together, so I don't know, no comment. Um, and I had two dinners at the home of the, two dinners at the home of the, the Ascokes, and the one, the celebration dinner, was, there was this big pot on the stone, and I really wasn't thinking, big blue pot, big blue top, and I didn't recognize the smell, and so I took the top off, and this long orange thing comes out of the pot, and I thought, it's Alaskan King Crab, which I've never had, and they are you. So it was very nice among the family. They had an aunt and uncle there, and Father Simeon's father was there for the occasion. Uh, also, when I got there, I got there on a Thursday, and the next day, um, Mrs. Um, Corey had arranged that I could come to the ladies' luncheon, and the ladies' luncheon is for the uh, wives of the graduates, or maybe all the women at the seminary, uh, and Bishop David. So we're all sitting there da -da 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 -da, with Bishop David, and he spoke to us, and I could see that he's a person who really cares uh, about the whole um, this whole process of bringing in young men who would become priests and go forth and teach uh, to people like themselves, to people who do things daily that they know about, working in the fish factory, shooting moose or whatever it is. Father Simeon told me he's been kind of moose before. So, uh, in a related topic, this is a picture of of um, Subdeacon Michael, Mr. Shandor. In 2005, we went to, uh, when we went to the seminary, uh, he is the one who started this Pennies for Alaska way back in the uh, early 60s. Wow. There was an earthquake, a terrible earthquake, in, um, and it was specifically in Kodiak. And my father was very struck, the church was there, everybody was very struck about that. So he thought, this is something that the children could do in Sunday school, they could um, learn to to you know have a heart to um, to give a charity and so on. So we had the uh, it's been in different kinds of jars and stuff, but we've had pennies for Alaska, and you bring your pennies to Sunday school. After a while, we decided to keep it here in the back of the church. Okay, so at this point, my father was coming to Alaska, and he had pennies and nickels and dimes and, and money all collected that needed to be counted. Well, at that time, you had to put them in those wrappers. Oh, she said, Dad, we better hurry up and do it. So he took care of it, and then he, when we came, he presented a check for a couple thousand dollars that had been collected over a long time. So, that, that, so the look on his face, you can see, that this is Bishop Nicholas at the time. And um, so I, I just think it's a very endearing picture. Right? Himself. So Michael Sandler says, give to pennies for Alaska. And what happens with this is it goes to the seminary. I mean, we just gave a donation and it was like, at home I had bags. I went to the bank like this, carrying bags of pennies and dimes and stuff. But even just out of change, it was almost a hundred bucks, you know, but you have to go to that machine and it goes, oh, you don't want to count your money and counts, counts the money. Uh, so that was two hundred dollars. It was very good. So um, this, this is a collection that's always there. Uh, a lot of people like it because they know it's going directly to the seminary. It goes to their general account. Um, they have other programs. This is clearly reminding me. Um, for next year, when we do not have a, an adopted seminary, they have a, uh, a pantry, uh, something pantry, where you give um, money or food. To, to the uh, people there who need it. You know, like we have our little thing. So if we wanted to give in some other way, we could do that. Okay, well, we do give to pennies for Alaska. So I just want to pass that. If you have pennies or anything you would like to give, you can give today, or it's over there by the water cooler. Oh,